Good to be back. Thank you. Can you just talk to us a little bit about how this fight kind of came together? I just got back to uh, Texas to start my training camp. I, I think I practiced twice. Um, then got a call um, asking if I could fill in for February. I didn't know who the opponent was. I said yes. They said, what about December 16th? I said yes. And they were like, well, really, the fight was supposed to be Saturday. Can you, can you make Saturday? So I got on a plane that day and, and flew here to, tech, or to Las Vegas. So when you heard the news, was there any hesitation because it's such short notice, or, or were you eager to kind of get that win back in 2023? Uh, I mean, kind of both. It's uh, Having a long camp is scary. You have a lot of time to get hurt, so having no time to really get injured or anything is nice. Um, Sue's already ready, so uh, I don't know. It just seemed right. I have a good manager. Um, I kind of just... Do what I say. Do what they say. They they've always steered me in the right direction, and I you know I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have this job if it wasn't for them. So, if he says, "Hey, this is the fight you need to take," and they also they gave me ten pounds, so easy weight cut, uh, a good fight, something that we were supposed to fight once before. So I, I really look forward to it. What do you think of the matchup? Great matchup. Uh, he's really exciting. His fight with uh, Matt Schnell was really good. Um, I want to fight a striker. I I want to try to work some of my striking, I haven't really been able to do that. Through my whole career, I've kind of been eager to get to the ground. And even in the Makayev fight, like I was winning the striking portion and I still had this eagerness to try to get him to the ground. But when I'm sparring in practice, I mostly stay on my feet. So I would like to show the new skills that I have. And I haven't really been able to do that in my last few fights. And I'm getting older now and I, I'm running out of chances to really show like how good I am and how good I can be. So I feel like Sue's a, a good opponent for that. Do you kind of picture this fight going three rounds, or do you feel like you can get in and out of there pretty quick with him? I, I feel like this is a guy that I could possibly sub, but honestly, I want to. I want to fight for three rounds. I want to put on a, a performance. I like. I like to have time in the cage. I like to get takedowns. I like to break records. I like to. You know what I mean? That's that's the place where I feel the most comfortable in my life is is when that cage door shuts. So, the more time I can spend in there, the better I feel. And last question for me, uh, I got to ask about the sponsoring the fighter. Um, could you tell us kind of how that went, it went down and what the, the motivation behind that was? Yeah, Tony actually hit me up and he was like, hey man, I just want to reach out and you know say like, I'm married to my wife, I love her so much and I hate situations like this. So just reached out and was like, you know, pat me on the back, I guess. And uh, then he was saying something about trying to get sponsors. And I was like, hey, man, I'll send you some money for a sponsorship. And he was like, cool, I'm going to put your head on my banner. So I was like, all right, I'll give you $500 if you win or when you show up and $500 if you knock him out. So, uh, I mean, he's a good dude. It has nothing like I don't lose any thoughts over Kevin or anything. And, you know, I, I wish him the best in his sports. You know, people make mistakes all the time. But uh, Tony seems like a really good guy. And, uh, you know, he's a good fighter. And, and that fight was fun to watch. So just going off the back of that, was that more about Tony than it was the other situation? Or was it, eh, there's a little bit of sweetness if uh, we get a win here too? Yeah, I mean, that's just, you know, I wouldn't want to be the, the asshole that gives some guy money and puts my face on their banner and then them lose, you know, that's, that's not what I was, but uh, I would have sponsored him anyway. He didn't have to put me on his banner. I just, uh, I don't know, if I know what it's like to uh, have to dig for sponsors. I'm, I'm just now making money in the UFC. I've, I've been at this game a long time and I'm finally making good money so I know what it's like to have to pinch pennies and and you know sleep on people's couches and and work while you're trying to train it's uh it's not easy so uh if I can help somebody out that uh is obviously a good dude a good dad you know a good husband then no sweat off my back but both you guys typically are flyweights this fight's at 135 is there any does it feel like any difference of you know no, normally a lot of time people say oh well, there's a difference because I'm fighting up a weight class or anything but you're still fighting another flyweight are there benefits to this or was this just a matter of it was just about the weight issues well it's nerve-wracking for me because I feel like even though I'm a fairly big flyweight one of my things that I'm best at is cutting weight like if it was a weight cutting competition I'll I'll win every time I have no problem I mean, it's a big problem to make weight, but I always do it. I have a good system. The, the people at the UFC PI have it down to a science. I just do exactly what they tell me. And making weight is usually one, one of the things I feel like I'm the best at. So like not having that in the back of my head, like, oh, we both have to make this weight cut. We both have to go through hell and then fight. Like, I know I'm good at that. I know I'm good at punishing myself and then, and then going into the fight. So it's a little weird not having to kill myself so much for this one, but, uh, I mean, I think it'll make for a, a better fight, a more exciting fight. And, you know, I could have came in here and made the weight probably, but 
it wouldn't have been healthy and uh, I wouldn't want to risk, you know, missing the weight class and not doing what I said I was going to do. So uh, either way, it's going to be tough. You know, I'm still going to have a weight cut. That's just the way it goes. And uh, I just feel like as far as for the fight goes, it's better. We'll both be recovered faster. We'll both be more rested and uh, we'll both be bigger. What is your typical walk around weight? I vary 152 to 148 is when I'm healthy and training hard. So it's not too big of a difference. Nah. So, I mean, outside of even just the weight cut, having a short notice fight, are there other benefits that a lot of us on the outside don't really think about, a lot of us watching? I mean, I know a lot of times we talk about, you know, there's no stress. You're not thinking about this fighter opposite of you for eight weeks or, or three or four months. You know, are there other benefits that we don't maybe think about that a short notice presents? For a guy like me, there's tons of benefits. I'll, I'll get in my own head up. I have a hard time, like, watching tape. If I watch tape on my opponent, I only see the good things that they do. And if I watch tape on myself, I only see the bad things that I do. So I'm my own worst critic. Having that time to, you know, put more, make my head bigger about how good this guy is or how, you know,